In this problem, we're asked to compute the mean and standard deviation for the sample of homes that range in square footage from 16, uh, from about 1,100 all the way up to about 1,600. And so we want to find out if these are representative of this particular region, uh, what on average would be the typical square, square footage of a home. And so to find the sample mean, uh, it's just going to be the sum of the values, uh, plus 1116, plus 1497, uh, all over 4. Okay. Now our units on the top uh, is square feet, so we're adding square footage together. And uh, 4, we could sort of think about that as the number of houses. So our units of the mean are going to be square foot per house. Or another way to say that is if all the houses have the same square footage, this particular number would be that number. So if you could take a little bit from the house that had more square footage and give it to the one that had less square footage, that way making them all equal, the meaning of this mean, which comes out to 14, about, about 1428. Uh, we don't need to go to decimal square feet, so this is close enough. Uh, so this will be square feet, and this will be per house. So there's our sample mean. Now we're going to need that in order to get the sample standard deviation. So right now what we do know is that on a number line, if I think about my, my center value, my central value is being right here, 1428, then we see that some of the houses are below, some of them are above in the square footage. So maybe I'll mark this over here as 1100, 12, uh, 1200, 1300, 1400, 15, and 1600. So we see that we have houses that are not super spread out, but spread out enough to where, um, you know, you have a house down here that's about 11, 1100, which uh, 1000, or 1100, 1200, 1300. Yeah, so we're right about here on this particular data point. And then we have a home that's about 1497, which is, uh, Let's see, it's going to be close to 1,500, so 13, 14. So it's going to be close, closer over here. And then 1,600 will be right over here. And we have also 1,500. So this is the central number. And we want to now figure out how to get some sort of metric of the spread. So the thing we like to do here, if we're going to, we don't, often don't hand compute this, but for the sake of this video, uh, we'll just go ahead and do it by hand. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the, the deviations, right? So we need to figure out how far each point is away from the mean. So that point, we know how far that point is, how far that point is, and also how far that point is. So what we're going to compute in part of the sample standard deviation is the difference between the value and the mean. So 1600 minus 1428 comes out to 172. And that's positive because we notice that it is greater than the mean. So greater than the mean would be a positive number. Less than the mean would be a negative. So 1,500 minus 1,428 would be 72. Again, a positive there since that's above the mean. But this value here, 1,116, when we compare that to 1,428, we get a value that's negative 312 units below the mean. So we get a negative 312. Now, one thing we should note is the reason you have more points over here uh, and only one point over here is this is an extreme point, right? This is really far, the farthest point, uh, the point that's the farthest away from the mean. And then we could also do 1497 minus 1428, which gives us uh, positive 69. So this will be 69, that's a positive number of units. And one good check is we should be able to sum these and see that we get zero. So if we don't get zero, that means that we have not found the balancing point. Either our mean is incorrect or uh, our computations are incorrect. Now we also have to take into account that we, we did round the mean. So uh, this comes out to, to about one, but the reason it does that relative to the size of the values is just because we, we truncated the 1428. And now what we need to do is we need to square these values. And the reason we do that 
There's some statistical reasons. That's what makes this what we call an unbiased estimator for the population, but it also removes the sign. Uh, in statistics, we don't take absolute values of negatives because it, it creates some other mathematical problems that we won't get into. Uh, this comes out to 29,584. 72 squared is 5184. 312 squared is 97,344. And 69 squared is 4,721. So now we should be able to sum these. These should no longer add to zero because they are now squared and therefore all positive. And this comes out to 136,873. Now this is just the sum of the squared deviations. The standard deviation, which is S, is equal to the square root of the sum of the deviations squared divided by n minus 1, where that's the number of values minus 1. So what we just calculated here is this is the sum, that's the addition of all of the deviations squared. Whoops, I did a parenthesis there in the square, so squared. And so now we know that this is going to be the square root of 136,873 divided by 4 minus 1, which is 3, and the square root of that divided by 3 comes out to 213.6, or about 214 square feet. Okay. Now this, is, this can be thought of as sort of an average deviation. Um, it's not quite an average deviation, because we did this squaring and square rooting, but you can kind of think about this as in a measurement of the average spread. So we get houses that are on average about 1,428 square feet, and so then about 214 square feet on either, either side of that represents the bulk of all the houses based upon this sample.